Hello Grade 11s and welcome back to our series on intermolecular forces. We have investigated the different types of intermolecular forces that exist between molecules. In this lesson, we will learn about how the type of intermolecular forces affects certain physical properties of substances. Physical properties of substances are properties such as molecular size, density, melting and boiling point, expansion upon heating, and conductivity. Let us start with a look at the relationship between the strength of van der Waals forces and molecular size. It was proposed that, for substances containing similar van der Waals forces, the strength of the intermolecular forces increases with an increase in molecular size. Let's take an example. All the molecules in this table are covalently bonded because their formulae are made up entirely of nonmetals. They are all also symmetrical molecules and are therefore nonpolar. Therefore, the intermolecular forces between all of the molecules or this table are similar van der Waals forces, specifically London forces. Let us compare the molecules on this table from left to right. Helium has the lowest molar mass and therefore is the molecule with the smallest molecular size on this table. The molar mass and therefore molecular size increases from left to right on the table. There seems to be a relationship between molecular size and the properties. As the size of the molecules increase, so does the strength of the intermolecular forces. So we can conclude that as the molar mass and molecular size increase from left to right on this table, so does the strength of the intermolecular forces increase. Notice that the melting and boiling points of the substances are indicators of the strength of the intermolecular forces. Notice too that the phase that the substances is in at room temperature also helps to determine the strength of the intermolecular forces. Substances with stronger intermolecular forces require more energy to break the molecules apart and therefore have higher melting and boiling points. Both the melting and boiling points increase from left to right across the table. As the strength of the intermolecular forces increases, so the molecules are more difficult to separate in a phase change. So therefore, the higher the melting and boiling point of the substance will be. So we can conclude that, at room temperature, substances that are in the solid phase generally have higher intermolecular forces than substances in the liquid or gas phase. This table illustrates some more examples of melting and boiling points of different substances. It shows the relative strengths of different types of intermolecular forces. We know that London forces are the weakest of all intermolecular forces. Then comes dipole-dipole forces, and then hydrogen bonds are the strongest. We can see from the examples given that as the strength of the intermolecular forces increases, so the melting points increase. Boiling points follow the same trend. If we compare covalently bonded substances like those we have discussed with the melting points of metals, we see that the metals have much higher melting points. Why do you think this is? To melt substances composed of small molecules like water, we need to separate the molecules. To do this, we need to overcome intermolecular forces. But to melt the metals, we need to break up the metal lattice. That means breaking bonds. Remember that bonds are much stronger than intermolecular forces. Next. Let us have a look at the relationship between the strength of intermolecular forces and density. The density of a substance is measured by how many molecules there are in a unit volume. This diagram shows the molecular arrangement of a covalently bonded substance in the solid, liquid, and gaseous phases. The molecules are packed very uniformly into a tightly packed lattice in the solid state. The molecules separate in the liquid phase and are even further apart in the gaseous phase. There are many more molecules per unit volume in the solid phase than there are in the liquid phase and even more so compared to the gaseous phase. 
the solid therefore has the highest density and the gas has the lowest density. Intermolecular forces are stronger when the molecules are close together. The intermolecular forces are virtually non-existent in the gaseous phase, as the molecules are too far apart for there to be any significant intermolecular forces between them. So we can therefore conclude that the stronger the strength of the intermolecular forces, the denser the substance will be. Now we will have a look at the relationship between the strength of intermolecular forces and thermal expansion. You now know that when the intermolecular forces between molecules are weak, it requires less energy to break them apart in order to melt or boil. The same concept can be applied within the same phase of the substance as well. This can be observed in the alcohol thermometer. An alcohol thermometer is a small sealed tube made of glass with a thin hollow tube up its center. The bulb and hollow tube are filled partly with alcohol that has been dyed red and partly with nitrogen. When heated, the molecules move apart from one another and the intermolecular forces in the alcohol weaken. The liquid expands as the molecules move apart. As the liquid expands, it moves up the tube and indicates a rise in temperature. When the temperature goes down, the molecules move closer together and the intermolecular forces between them strengthen. Now we will investigate the relationship between the strength of intermolecular forces and thermal conductivity in metals and nonmetals. In grade 10, you learned that metals are generally better conductors of heat and electricity than nonmetals. In order to be able to conduct heat, the particles of the substance vibrate faster as they receive more energy and then transfer that energy to neighboring particles. This then conducts heat through the substance. The stronger intermolecular forces of the atoms in a metal compared to nonmetal compounds means that the particles of a metal are held very closely together. They are therefore able to transfer heat more easily and thus better conductors of heat. Here we have a diagram of a metallic lattice. In grade 10, you learned that the metallic lattice is made up of the positive metal nuclei that are held rigidly in the lattice and are unable to move out of their positions. However, the electrons surrounding the nucleus are free to move and they conduct electricity through the metal by transferring from one nucleus to another as they move around. Thus, metals have stronger intermolecular forces and better conductivity than covalent compounds. Covalent compounds, in general, are poor conductors of heat and electricity as they do not have any free electrons in their lattice. So to recap what we have covered in this lesson, as the strength of the intermolecular forces increases, so the molecular size increase. The melting and boiling point increases, the density increases, and the thermal conductivity increases. That's all for today, grade 11s. Join me again to do some experiments to investigate the relationship between the strength of intermolecular forces and the properties of the substances. Make sure to attempt questions in the task video for this series. You can also find out more information on this topic at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Until then, goodbye.